Hi guys, so today's declutter video is all around my cream face products. So this is highlighters, this is blushes, this is also bronzer contour type products as well. I tend to think about this in terms of do I wanna wear a cream product for the day? And if I do, I tend to reach for cream products in all three categories. Sometimes I will wear a cream highlighter, um, separately from cream brush and bronzer, but there are definitely times where I feel like cream products are just my go-to. Definitely more in the summertime or when I feel like I'm going to be outside and maybe sweating or getting a little more oily than I typically do. And I feel like cream products are one of those things that really lock into place or at least should lock into place better and make it through the day in a way that sometimes my powder products just don't. So that is why I've chosen to keep these all as a separate category as opposed to putting the cream highlighters in with the regular powder highlighters. I will say too, this is also including some liquid products. So liquids and creams in all three of these categories. So I think we're gonna start first with bronzer contour type products, then we'll move into cream blushes, and then finally we'll wrap up with highlighters. So let's go ahead and get into today's declutter. All right, so here are all of my cream and liquid bronzer contour products. I don't have a ton of these. So let's start with this super bougie item down here. This is the Chanel Tande Chanel. They offer one color in this. I picked this up after I kept hearing a zillions of people talk about it. It does have a really nice consistency. I do pick it up with a stippling brush and then just kind of blend it around on my skin. That is my preferred way of doing it. But I have to be honest, the more I've used it, the more I've realized that it's just, it's a little too warm for me. And I think that somebody with a more medium skin tone with a more neutral or yellow leaning undertone is probably gonna like this a little bit better. The texture is gorgeous on this. I really do wish that they would make this in some other, in a few other colors, something deeper, something more, more cool toned for fair skin tones and maybe, you know, honestly, probably two or three deeper shades. But unfortunately, Chanel's only ever done this one. And I think I wanna pass this on to a friend who's got a little bit of a deeper undertone and I think may actually Actually really enjoy this. Yeah, this was not cheap, but I think she's going to be excited to get her hands on it. And it's just not a product that I'm reaching for now that I have paid a bit more attention to undertones of bronzers. This is a little elf duo. This is part of my makeup use up for 2018. So this actually has a cream blush and a bronzer in it. My goal is to pan the bronzer. I'm just about there on this guy. This one to me reminds me a lot of the texture of the uh, Tande Chanel that we just decluttered. Um, but I like the undertone on this one just a smidge more. And we'll see how much this comes across on camera. But you can just tell that this one is ever so less orange and a little more neutral leaning than that very, I think, kind of orangey colored Tande Chanel. And then I do like this pink blush. I'm not always a pink blush girl, but I actually really like this combo on my cheeks. So I am loving this. I'm actually still not sick of it, um, even though I've been panning it this year. And to be honest, I'd much rather have this in my collection, use it up, and then get a fresh cream product uh, in the future than go through that giant Chanel one. So keeping this one. Um, let's talk about these two. So these are my liquidy type bronzers. This is from temp This is kind of a shimmery bronzer. So this is one that came, I think, in a boxy charm last summer. Um, I'm not sure if they sell this still or not, but I actually really did enjoy this. Um, how I like to do it is I put a little bit on the back of my hand like this, and I kind of smear it out and make a thin layer. And then I will pick up a stippling brush or sometimes a sponge and then blend, use that to blend it out on my skin. But it gives a really subtle shimmery glow to the skin. It blends out like a dream. The undertone is once again, a little more neutral, a little more cool leaning than that bright sort of warm bronzer from Chanel. So I like the undertone and I really like how this looks on my skin. So I do think I wanna hang on to this one. I think I probably wanna hang on to this one too. But this is the Wet n Wild Mega Cushion Compact. They offer one shade of this. This is Cafe Au Soleil. Um, it has one of those stupid puffs. You would never use a puff like this to put on a bronzer, but I haven't gotten rid of it yet. Um, and this one is actually really easy to put on your skin as well, but it is a matte bronzer. 
Um, it's a hair warmer, if you can see that, than the one down below from Temp2, but it's still not too warm that I can't wear it. And it blends into the skin so, so well. So whereas this guy has a liquid, is a liquid consistency that has a little bit of a satiny shimmer to it, this one is completely matte on the skin. And I kind of like having these two as my liquid bronzers. I feel like I get my shimmer and my matte from these and I really do enjoy them. So, so I feel like I'm pretty happy. Hi, Finn. So I feel like I'm pretty happy with these three bronzery products. I've got a cream one I like, I have a liquid one that has a little bit of a satiny shimmer to it, and then I have a liquid one that's matte. And I feel like this kind of completes what I need from a bronzer perspective when I wanna use a cream or a liquid. So I'm pretty happy with these three. These are contour type products. So this is actually one from Jordana. This is their Sculpt and Glow. This is in the shade 01 Light. It is very cool and ashy undertone, but I actually love this for cream contouring. Um, it's actually really pretty. And unlike the blushes where I had a problem with those not setting, I don't remember having a problem with this not setting on my cheek. I do wanna compare it against some of these other ones here. This is Lancome. This is a little contour and highlighter stick. This is in the shade Ivory. So it has a contour stick on one end and a highlighter stick on the other. I first picked this up after a recommendation at Sephora because I was looking for a contour, cream contour product that would work for very fair skin tones. Um, I did really enjoy this contour stick and I actually used it quite a bit. You can see the tone is very similar to that Jordana one. I never really cared for the highlighter side of this. It was incredibly subtle and I just felt like it did next to nothing. Let's continue on here. I accidentally have two of these, like Ding Dong. So this is the Contour and Highlight Duo from Milani. This is in the shade 01 Fair Light. I feel like I thought I had lost one of these and then I ended up finding it. So I feel like I have accidentally used both of these. So this isn't a product I'm gonna be able to donate because I have this end here can't be sanitized, but I do think that this end here, yeah, I've barely touched this one. I may send this to my sister just to see if she ends up enjoying it. She's very fair, and I think this is gonna be a good cool toned highlighter for her. But I do really enjoy the formula of this one. And you can see it is very similar to these three here. Blends out really, really well. Um, and then the highlighter on this end, is also really pretty. It's a it's kind of a champagne gold. It's definitely not the most shiny highlighter ever, but it definitely is pretty. Don't do cream contour a ton, so I don't feel like I need to keep all of these. I like this Jordana one, but I like the Milani one a little bit more because I like it to be a little more precise. This one's a lot chubbier and this one's a lot skinnier, so I think I'm gonna pass these two on and just keep them all on you. Okay, so here is my cream blush collection. I, of all these products, probably like cream blush the least. So I have a handful of products that I have enjoyed here and some that I probably need to part with. But in general, I can get along with cream bronzers and highlighters. I feel like they're easier to apply. I always feel like I am taking a bit of a gamble sometimes with cream blush. I don't know, perhaps I just need to work on my technique, but there's some that I feel like work better than others. So I've got a couple things from e.l.f. and a couple things from ColourPop. Um, let's start with ColourPop down here. So I have three of these. I do like this formula. I feel like this is one where I can almost use a regular blush brush to apply it. I don't have to use my finger. So it's part of the reason I have collected a couple of these out here. Um, I do need to probably put them into my rotation a little bit longer. A couple shades that I did enjoy, probably my favorite shade here is this. This is between the sheets. It's a very sort of neutrally rose color. It's a flattering color in my skin tone. It's kind of neutral, but yet got a nice pinky undertone to it. So I do like this one, so I do wanna keep it. I think I'm gonna keep this one as well. This is the shade Prenup. It is a little bit more of a satiny texture, and it's just a nice dusty, orchidy pink color. Still very subtle. I did like both of these when I used them. And then this is the shade Aphrodisiac. It's getting a little weird on the color. I don't know if you can see that there. It's almost like it's separating. I feel like, I'm not sure what causes that, but this one's more of a brown. In fact, it almost could work as a bronzer for me. 
Um, but I feel like something is kind of going odd or going off in this one and the color's getting strange. So I do think I'm gonna pass on Aphrodisiac, but I am gonna keep these two. These here are part of the e.l.f. Beautifully Bare line. So this is the shade Peach Perfection and this is the shade Rose Royalty. Of all of the cream products that I had tried at the drugstore, just regular drugstore, I actually really enjoyed these a lot but I feel like these are several years old and they're just, the texture's just going a little off in them. These might be ones that I pick up again in the future, but I just feel like these have been in my collection for a while and I feel like the texture has changed in them, but I did really like how much these set down, cream to powder kind of texture, very easy to apply with a stipple brush um, or even my finger, didn't mess with my foundation. So I did really enjoy this formula, but I do think these are just time to go in the trash can. And then this is the e.l.f. Cream Blush Palette. This is fairly new to my collection. I was trying kind of all of their face products and was curious about this one. This one is a little more intense than the Beautifully Bare line, so I do have to be a little more cautious when using this one in terms of pigmentation. However, it does actually blend out really well. So let me just grab this top one here. So if you blend it out on your skin, it gets a lot more subtle and it's a lot less scary than maybe those swatches I just did would lead you to believe. So this is one where I do feel like I didn't struggle to have it blend out and then it did set down really nicely. So I feel like this is also a really good one palette to pick up if you've been interested in cream products because I think this is a good example of one that does perform well. I do like this. I like that it gives me a nice mix of neutrals and corals and pinks. So I think I'm gonna hang on to this one for the time being. All right, so we've moved on to highlighters. We're gonna look at the cream products first and then we're gonna look at liquids. And I've tried to divide these up by color family so we can see if we have any duplicates or things that are just redundant in my collection. These are cream highlighters that I would consider to be more colorful. So they have a bit of a duochrome type shift to them. Let's start with one that I know I'm going to pass along. This is from e.l.f. This is like their duochromatic one. I like some of their other stick highlighters, but this one just felt like it was laying down color and wasn't really giving me a whole lot of shine. So I felt like it was just not glowy and was just sort of a bluish lavender color that I didn't really care for. So this one, although I think they make some other good highlighting products we'll talk about here in a minute, this is one that just never worked for me. Um, these two are more purpley. So this is Hippo from ColourPop. This is newer to my collection. And you can see, although it's got a little bit of a lavender shift to it, it's a lot less like blue undertoned to that e.l.f. one we just swatched. So I actually think this one is really, really pretty. Um, I did want to compare it against this. This is the NYX Bright Idea Illuminating Stick, and this is in the shade Lavender Lust. And this one's actually looking a little more lavender than this one. I'm gonna put these on the back of my wrist. Sometimes it's easier for me to see undertones when I put them on my wrist like this. I feel like in all honesty, these are really similar and I don't need both of them. And I think I like the fact that this ColourPop one just looks a little more wet on my skin and a little less frosty than the NYX one. So I think I'm gonna keep the ColourPop shade in Hippo and pass along this little NYX guy. This is from L'Oreal. This is their infallible stick, infallible galaxy stick rather. This is in the shade Cosmic Pink. This has different packaging at Ulta, but it's basically one of those sort of duochrome pink shifting highlighters. But I actually feel like this one is a smidge more subtle and I think therefore a little more wearable than some of those pink highlighters end up being. And then this is Butter Highlighter from Physician's Formula. This is in the shade Pearl. And although this looks very white, if it catches the light in the right way, it actually has a pearly or pinkish glitter in it. And I don't know if I'm gonna be able to pick that up here on camera, but I put it in this duochrome section because I just never feel like when I put it on my cheeks that it looks 100% just like pearly or gold or champagne. Like I feel like it's got a little bit of a pinkish reflect to it. I think I'm gonna keep this butter one. I feel like it's very different than any of the other cream ones we just swatched. 
it's still duochrome ish without being like super extreme. And I do think I'm gonna pass this one on. I do not mind the undertone of this guy, but I feel like I've got um, powder sort of duochrome shades in this vein that I just like a little bit better formula wise as far as how they look on my cheeks. So I think I'm gonna pass this guy on. Okay, so these are cream products that I would consider to have a little bit more of a pinkish undertone with the exception of this guy. This is from e.l.f. This is their Targeted Natural Glow Stick in Fresh Morning Dew. This one actually has no color to it. It's just a kind of balm stick that adds just a little bit of gloss to the skin, but I don't find this to be as sticky or as like, I don't know, weird feeling as some of these other sort of wet balm-like things for the cheek. I do think it's unique to my collection and I think it's kind of fun to play with from time to time, so I'm gonna hang on to it. These three all kind of fall within that pinky category. So this is the Maybelline Master Strobe Stick. This I think is absolutely stunning. I have gotten my mom hooked on this one as well. She loves this stick. Just a really pretty pinkish highlight there. This is from e.l.f. as well, part of their Targeted Natural Glow Stick. This is their Pink Pearl Glow. This one is a little lighter and maybe a slight more champagne undertone than the Maybelline one there. Maybelline's definitely more pinky. And then this is the NYX Dose of Dew. This is a face gloss, and this is one where it like, it almost looks like you didn't even put anything on. Um, it really does act like a very wet looking highlighter. For as wet as it looks on the cheek, it sets down and it's not glossy or sticky feeling on the skin either. Gotta be honest guys, I think I wanna keep all three of these. I like them all for very different reasons. These have two different undertones and this one is more like wet look um, that still sets down. So I do think I wanna keep all three of these. I think I've got some redundancies as we get into some of the more champagne colors, but these three I think all have a unique purpose in my collection. This is kind of an oddball product, so I'm gonna talk about it separately before pulling anything else in. This is from e.l.f. This is their little shimmer palette. This I actually really do like. Uh, the three or the four colors that are in here end up looking very, very similar on the cheek. And when I first got this and I swatched it, it felt kind of oily feeling in the pan, and I thought to myself, oh man, you are not gonna like this palette. But in reality, these are incredibly smooth on the skin. They set down to be a beautiful texture. And the undertones are different, but they're it's very subtle difference. It's definitely meant for someone with fair skin. So this is newer to my collection. I've really been enjoying playing with this. Um, and I'm definitely just not willing to give it up. I mean, it's a really interesting, really smooth looking cream product. So gonna hang on to this. Another one-off product that I think I'm gonna hang on to is from Stila. This is the Heaven's Hue Highlighter. This is in the shade Kitten. This is one that I had looked at at Ulta like a zillion different times, finally broke down and got. And this just looks wet. Like, I don't know how else to describe this. Like, you swatch it on your finger and you put it on your skin and it literally looks, looks wet. I don't know how else to describe it. Even after it sets down, and this is definitely a cream to powder one, it is the, one of the most wet looking highlighters that I own. So it's a really interesting formula. I don't feel like anyone ever talks about it. This shade Kitten is just absolutely beautiful and I really enjoy it. So I'm gonna hang on to this. Okay, so these are all more of my champagnes and sort of maybe light gold shades that I have. So let's just get these all opened up. Um, okay, let's start with probably my favorite in this collection. This is Flexitarian from ColourPop. Incredibly intense, absolutely blinding highlight, really light on my skin, just stunning. And then this is Lunch Money, which is a little more subtle, a little more natural. It's got a little bit of a gold shift to it, but it's a gold that I can wear. So I really do love both of these. These aren't going anywhere. This is from Marc Jacobs. This is his, what do they call this? His Spotlight Glow Stick. This is, I think they just do one shade in this. This one is really pretty, but I feel like it's really similar to Lunch Money. Yeah, I don't feel like I need both of these. I feel like... I like the undertone, even though this one looks a little bit lighter, that's Marc Jacobs, I like the undertone of Lunch Money a little bit better. Um, I've played around with this one for a while. It is nice. I just I don't find myself like as gaga for it as a lot of other people are. And I think my friend might really enjoy playing around with this. So I think I'm gonna send this to her. This is from Becca. This is Opal in their cream formula. 
and I feel like this is one that I probably need to pass along just because it's a little too, it's, uh, it's almost exactly my skin color and I just don't feel like it does a whole lot on my skin. So I may pass this one on to a friend as well. This is from Trasique. I think this is a little sample size. This is the color Maldives. And that is a really pretty neutral champagne. I like that a lot. It's a little more neutral and a little less gold there than Lunch Money. So that is it there. This is a little Baby Benefit Watts Up. That's a little bit deeper, you can see. And then this is Pat McGrath. This is her nude shiny stick. One end is a balm that I do not like. It's too sticky and too glossy. I actually prefer the e.l.f. one to this one. But the opposite end is the highlighter that came in that little kit. Oh, see? That highlighter is really pretty. I do love the texture of it. That's why every time I go to swatch these and think I'm gonna get rid of it, I just, I, I struggle a little bit. All right, I think I'm gonna get rid of this baby benefit what's up. I don't think I will miss this, but of what's left, yeah, I'm just not ready to part with this end of the Pat McGrath highlighter. I paid a ton for it. I ended up getting rid of her powder highlighter, so I think I'm gonna hang on to this. And then I also think I'm gonna hang on to this Trisique one because I actually think the undertone of that is really pretty as well. Okay, we're moving on to liquid products here. These are ones that I would consider to be more duochrome and or colorful highlights. This is from uh, Wet n Wild. This is their Mega Halo. This is in the shade Halo Graphic. I do really like these. Uh, this formula rather from Wet n Wild. I think it's really, really nice. And that is pink without being too, too extreme. So I did like this one. This is from Essence. This, I think, I feel like this is another product that came and went on their website. I don't know if it's still available. This is the Glow Stop. This is newer to my collection, but I feel like it's already gone. Um, it is very extreme. Um, it's a white base, but it has a very intense, um, like blue shift to it um, in a way that I just didn't really care for. I couldn't figure out um, how to use this without making it look like there was a bruise on my face. So I do think I'm gonna pass this guy on. And then this is ColourPop. They don't have this anymore either. This is Amethyst. This was their crystal liquid highlighter. They did some colorful versions. I got the lavender one just cause I thought it was interesting. And it is a really pretty lavender highlight. It's not as extreme as that one there, but I feel like I kept Hippo from ColourPop and it had a similar sort of lavendery undertone. So I feel like I'm good for having a lavender highlight. So I'm gonna pass this guy on as well. Okay, so these are white-ish highlighters. Um, this is an old e.l.f. facial whip. This is the updated packaging of the same product. I am not a huge fan of this. I think that the it looks really pretty on the skin, but it's a very thick formula that gets a little globby and it's it's just very hard to blend out because it's so thick and it's so sticky. So, you know, I'm sitting here blending this out on my hand and by the time I get done, you're gonna be left with something really pretty. But I just find that it is kind of hard to apply to the face and I've never found a way with a beauty blender or my finger or a brush that I enjoyed playing with these two products. So I am gonna pass them on. And then this is the JCAT Aura Glow Highlighter. This is in the shade White Goddess. This is one I picked up for spring. I really like the formula on this and the color is different than anything else in any of the other liquid highlighters I have. It is a very pretty white gold. So I do think I wanna hang on to this guy. All right, so here are liquid highlighters that have a little bit of pinky undertone to them. So we'll have to see how many of these are way, way, way too similar to each other. One that I got last year that I still really love is from Maybelline. This is their strobing liquid in light. It's pinky, but it really blends out onto the skin so well. It's very light toned. It looks just absolutely lovely on the skin. I just I really love how this highlighter works and applies and sets down. Gorgeous. Um, this, however, is from Ulta Beauty. This is their liquid illuminator in Northern Lights. I recently just tried this because I thought it might be a comparable product and it just it's a little thicker and I don't feel like it gives hardly any glow to my skin like whatsoever. So hopefully you guys can see that. Look at the difference as far as highlighting effect. So this is a tiny little tube, so it's clearly meant to be used as a liquid highlighter versus like a primer. But I just feel like 
This one is so much more intense from Maybelline and so much nicer formulated that that is the one I wanna keep. And then I'm gonna get rid of the Ulta Beauty one. This is part of my project pan, so I'm obviously not getting rid of that. This is the Wet n Wild, Wet n Wild Mega Glow Cushion. They only have one shade and that's who that, Who's That Pearl. This is more definitely more champagne and it's a little lighter and less pink than the Maybelline one here at the bottom, but I really love this. I, it applies beautifully to the skin with your finger or with a sponge or even with a brush. Um, just a really natural, pretty pearly highlighter. So if you are fair toned, this is definitely a great product at the drugstore. Now we come to a bunch of liquid illuminators. So these three here are all new releases for this year. And then this one from Alme came out last spring, I think. But this one from Alme is interesting to me because it has a liquid illuminator on one end and then a stick highlighter on the other. The stick highlighter is absolutely stunning. Just a really light, almost whitish highlighter, just gorgeous. And then the glow on the other end is a really pretty natural pearly glow. So it's definitely not as intense as that Maybelline one down here, but it's absolutely beautiful. Great formula on both ends and layering up these products works really well together as well. So it's a more subtle highlighter on the liquid side and then the, um, the pearly sort of stick concealer is more blinding, I guess, but layered over the top of each other. They are just gorgeous. I mean, that is such a beautiful layered product. So I really do enjoy this one. I feel like I wanna hang on to it. These three, I feel like we really do need to swatch side by side and see kind of how we're feeling about them. I know I liked the formula on all of them. From a price point perspective, Wet n Wild is definitely the cheapest from a dollar perspective. Makeup Revolution is cheapest in a price per ounce perspective. L'Oreal is beautiful, but I feel like it might be overpriced at, as both the price point as well as the product it's uh, at price per ounce perspective. This one is a little creamier, if I remember correctly, than some of the other ones, but oh, yeah, that is a beautiful highlight. There is no getting around that. This is the Hello Halo. This is in the shade Halo Goodbye from Wet n Wild. This one is nice because I feel like it has a, what well, has a dropper bottle and it actually makes it really easy to apply. That one is maybe a slightly deeper shade. It's a little more pinky toned and a little less silvery than the one from the Lumi. And then this is Starlight from Makeup Revolution. This is their um, liquid illuminator. This comes in a dropper style bottle. And holy crap, that is so intense. Wow. Yeah, that is the most intense out of all three of them. You can see that there. So that is the one from Makeup Revolution. That is the one from Wet n Wild. And this is the one from L'Oreal. All right, so Makeup Revolution, hands down staying. I don't feel like I need to keep both of these. In fact, the both of these are probably redundant to what I am keeping at this point, but I think I wanna hang on to the Wet n Wild one and I'm gonna go ahead and pass the L'Oreal one on to a friend. Okay, so these are more champagne style liquid highlighters. So let's talk with one that I think I'm ready to part with. This is from L'Oreal, this is their Lumi Glow Illuminator. This is one of their original products. This is in the shade Rose. I was hanging on to this not as a highlighter, but because I was mixing it into foundations that were just a little too yellow. And because it had a very warm, rosy undertone, it was helping to offset some of that. But at this point, this product is very, very old. And I also feel like I have done, I don't use this a ton for why I kept it, Obviously I can't wear this as a highlighter, it's far too dark. And I just feel like I'm getting to the point now where it's like I want my foundation to match and if it doesn't, I'm gonna either mix it with another foundation to neutralize it or I'm just not gonna keep it. So this is one I'm gonna pass along. Another one I'm gonna pass along, this is from e.l.f. This is their Power Glow Highlighter. This was their lightest shade in this highlighter and it is rose gold. It's a little oily feeling and it kind of feels like it's separating um, and it's very greasy feeling. So I just feel like I'm not entirely sure how to use this product. I don't feel like it works well as a highlighter. You could probably mix it in with a foundation to make it less um, matte 
but it never sets down. It always feels a little oily and greasy and the color doesn't match me. So this is gonna be a pass. The rest of these, I feel like I need to do a little bit of swatching with. So this is from Becca. This is their Shimmering Skin Perfector. This is actually in Champagne Pop, which is way too dark of a color for me. But for some reason, I really like this one. Um, blend it over my cheeks. Um, not necessarily as a highlighter to like, I don't know, brighten the tops of my cheeks, but I almost like to use this all over my skin just to give it a bigger glow. I mean, it almost is my skin tone, so I feel like it's just one of those ones where I don't wanna look like I'm wearing highlighter. I really want my skin, my cheeks, and the tops of my cheekbones to look glowy, but not look like I'm wearing any sort of highlighter. Um, that's when I reach for this. So, you know, it doesn't do anything to lighten the tops of my cheekbones. It's far too dark for that. But because it's got that peachy undertone to it, it just, I don't know, something about this one is really cool and unique. So I'm gonna hang on to this. It, listen, there's a ton in here. I probably need to put this in like a makeup use up next year so I can remember to use this on a more regular basis. But I really do like how it looks every time I use it. So I'm gonna hang on to this guy. This is a different illuminator from Becca. This is a little baby size. This is Moonstone in their Shimmering Skin Perfector. This one is a lot lighter and more goldish. And you would think that this would be a better color for my skin tone. And in some respects, you would be right. But I almost like the peachiness of this one better than this one. I don't know. I feel like if I'm going to reach for a liquid illuminator, I'm going to grab one of those pinky ones over this one. So I'm going to pass this guy along. This is Cover FX, the Custom Enhancer Drops. This is in the shade Moonlight. This is the liquid highlighter that started this whole crazy trend. This one I put over here because I felt like it was more champagne than pink, whereas a lot of the ones I just played with were very pinky toned. This one I felt like was more neutral. Yeah, it is. It's a lot more neutral of an undertone than the pink ones, but holy crap is that intense. Now, I will say I almost like the formula of the Makeup Revolution ones a little bit better because I feel like I have a little bit more time to work with those um, and get them blended out than this one, which sets really quickly, but it is an absolutely beautiful, beautiful product. Just in comparison, let me show you what Starlight looks like from, just in comparison, this one here is the uh, Starlight shade from Makeup Revolution. You can see it's a lot pinkier and more silver. And then this shade here, um, Moonlight, is definitely more champagne and a neutral undertone. So I definitely feel like the undertone on these two is very different, pinky versus champagne. So I don't feel too bad keeping both of these. And then this is the Essence Make Me Glow Liquid Highlighter. This one, I feel like, ooh, that was a lot. Don't love the doe foot on this one. The undertone on this is pretty, it's peachy. I feel like I would enjoy the undertone of this guy, but I feel like it just kind of blends away to nothingness, whereas these really give you a wet, very glossy look to your skin. This one just didn't have that same luminosity and shimmer as you blended it out. So I do think I can pass this one along and not miss it. Okay guys, so here is what I am keeping in this little bin, and here is what I'm getting rid of in this bin. This is looking at all of the highlighters, the blushes, and the bronzer contour type products. I'm keeping 27 of that kind of product and I'm getting rid of 23. I definitely have kept and have most of liquid highlighters in this collection, but I feel like I've got a nice collection of a couple of cream blushes as well as a couple of cream bronzer contour products. So I feel like these products are going to go to a good home. I already know where some of these are going to be much more well-loved than me. And I'm feeling pretty good about how all this is organized. So if you like today's video, Video, make sure and give it a thumbs up and make sure you're subscribed. We have a lot more declutters where this came from. This declutter series is going to go on for quite a few more months here, I would imagine, on my channel before we make it through my entire collection. Let me know down in the comments if you have tried any of these products, what your favorite liquid and cream products are. Do you like the category? Do you not like the category? I feel like it can be a kind of polarizing topic. Some people love them, some people hate them, but I would love to know your take on liquid and cream face products. I hope you guys are having a great day. I look forward to talking to you soon. Bye.